Hey guys, this is Andre, a certified translator and a real estate concierge relocating good people to one of the best countries in Europe. This is Dennis. Dennis is from Canada. Hey Dennis, thank you hey, for Andrew. a few minutes to talk. Yeah. Dennis is an experienced driver from Canada and on top of uh, other things we'll discuss, well mostly we'll discuss driving here. Dennis, how is driving generally in Belarus? It's different. It's definitely different. Um, people tend to drive slower in this country. Um, general consensus of everywhere I've driven in the world, people tend to speed. Uh, here it seems like it's quite normal to go 20 to 30 kilometers below the speed limit. So you got to adjust for that. Are you sure about the lanes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the, on the left lane sometimes it's a bit faster. On the right lane normally there's trucks and everything, so all the reasonable fast guys normally go on the left. Well, sometimes the guys who are going on the left are not really reasonable, so that's that's probably what we're talking about here. And uh, generally, are people easier? Do they let you into the lane if you flash the people, turn? People are much more accommodating here. It's not, a, it's not a battle to try and change lanes. You put your signal on, they'll, they'll let you in, and uh, everybody is very polite. You know, you let someone in, they'll, they'll flash their hazards at you as a thank you. Yeah. Um, Even the BMWs let you in. Yes, to flash yes, them. absolutely. Yeah. That's rare. How's driving in town? Any signs that look odd or looked at the beginning? You only have to have your driving license translation, right? Right. Well, and if one doesn't have his driving license translation, uh, that's considered as driving without license. So yes. it's not a very good idea. Yes. Which I didn't know at the beginning. Uh, the country of yours must have signed the Vienna Convention. By the way, US hasn't signed it as far as I know and a bunch of others. So Northern you Canada. might look up Wikipedia 1968 license uh, Vienna Convention. And you can see if your country signed it, then your license is just all right. If it hasn't, you have to have notarized translation of the license. Yes. City driving, 60 kilometers per hour, give or take. Yeah. Speed humps, or as we call them, sleeping cops. Many, cups. many, many speed bumps. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get every 100 meters uh, on some streets. So you'll have four or five of them lined up and that took some time to get used to. Um, and very few stop signs, uh, the, the red, Dime, or sorry, the yellow diamonds and uh, the yellow yield signs took me a, a bit to kind of figure out what that meant. So the diamond is you have the right of way, the yield is you have to stop for the oncoming traffic. Uh, what I find interesting is they have both, right? Whereas in North America, we would just have a stop sign. And if there's no other sign, you go through. So it's, uh, they're almost overcompensating with the signage. So uh, when you settled in, obviously you didn't have a car. Bringing a car in on a temporary residency is basically impossible. You can have it and once a year reset the temporary customs clearance if you are not afraid or allergic to that kind of bureaucracy. Nothing major out there, but first you rented a car. So that was your first experience, a couple of driving f uh, speed fines, right? Yeah, I mean, originally um, I didn't even have a plan to get a car because uh, the taxi service is so inexpensive here. It's it's crazy. It's, Yandex uh, go, guys. Yandex is very, very inexpensive. The, um, the curse of all conventional cabs. <laughs> so uh, before, when the idea of getting a car came into mind, I, they had this ride sharing taxi service or car rental service. And I rented a car a couple of times and uh, it was definitely some adjusting because uh, a lot of U-turns take place here which is not so normal from the area that I lived in. Um, and uh, left turns, you can't make a lot of them, depending on where you are. Um, so you kind of have to be aware of that. And uh, just getting accustomed to the flow of traffic and how people drive. Okay. Now what about pedestrians? Do they make, and uh, cyclists? They probably don't exist on the public roads. Cyclists, well, in this area, there's like packs of them because I think the uh, the teams train here. Um, but I like so, the sports guys uh, yeah. dressed the same way. Yeah, but they're all on the same team. Civilian cyclists. The civilian cyclists. Um, the guys with parking chains and all nah, that kind of stuff. You know, I don't really see that that often. A lot of electric scooters, um, a lot of those uh, electric unicycle mm -hmm. uh, setups. Um, pedestrians everywhere. People walk all over the place and you really have to be careful with those pedestrian yeah. crossings. You have to slow down and give them two lanes if they are on the other side coming towards you. You definitely, that's definitely something you have to get used to when you're driving here is you always have to be scanning the sidewalks to make sure. And if someone's coming along on a bike <laughs> and you're trying to make a turn, you got to watch out for that because yeah. they have the right of way. Sometimes these guys only look like rabbits yeah. ahead. 
driving here in uh, in Minsk or in Belarus. There's a lot of little things that are pretty different. They're subtle, you know. So, what's the general idea about filling up the car here? Well, it's it's different. Um, North America, you know, you would drive up to the pump, put your card in, hit fill, and then you get charged for whatever you put in your vehicle. Uh, here you have to figure out how much you want to put in the car, go in and pay first, tell them how many liters you want, then they'll give you a receipt, and you go out and you would pump the gas. Uh, I haven't been able to just go in and say, I'd like to fill my car, please. Because I believe you have to make a payment before they'll allow you to pump gas. Um, I think there are apps available where you can just connect it to your bank card, and, uh, and I think... Yeah, the there is yeah. one. So in that case, I guess you could do a fill up and then just pay at the end? Um, uh, you exactly order sure. it, push the button, they charge you, and then they release the tap. So it's right. perfect and cuts the line really comfortably. Yeah, so that's, that's the first major uh, thing that I noticed in terms of filling having to fill up a car here it took me a while to get used to because I mean I never really thought about how many liters uh, my gas tank was back in Canada it wasn't important I needed gas I went to the gas station I filled up the car and then I left yeah. so here I basically have to figure out on the gauge mathematics mathematically approximately how much so far, I've only messed up once where I ordered too much gas. But they refunded. And, uh, and then they case. refunded me. I had to go back in. Just as long as you don't mix diesel with benzene, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. That one so far, so far no problem with that one. So you don't want to walk too much. Yandex is a bit problematic because the private uh, uh, kindergarten thing is away. You yeah. need to drive. You need to drive daily. Yeah. So the wheels have to be outside there. And uh, secondhand options? Second-hand vehicles is um, very different here. You have to be very careful. Uh, unless you're looking at buying something that's maybe a year old or two years old that's still under warranty, uh, you have to, whatever vehicle you're interested in, you have to take it to a mechanic and get it checked. And the warranty doesn't Absolutely. guarantee the timeless supply of uh, parts, by the way. True. So far, we haven't had any issue. Um, vehicle's been great, but... Well, I did have a bit of a nightmare. Uh, I almost purchased a vehicle. The price seemed a little too good to be true. And Mercedes? Uh, yes. And uh, luckily... Uh, how old? Uh, it was an older model. Uh, 2009, uh, I believe. 99? Yeah, okay. 2009. Okay. Um, sorry, no. 2019. Okay. My bad. Um, and the price was it was too good to be true. So I, I was... Um, a little leery but uh, luckily there was a gentleman that I had met who spoke English and he was really into cars he was actually really into Mercedes and he went with me and uh, he was sort of like the middleman and he was the one that said okay we need to go take this to a mechanic now which I was like why <laughs> he's like no no we gotta get it checked out and uh, it turns out that if I would have purchased that car mm -hmm. uh, the mechanic said I'd maybe get another 5,000 kilometers out of it and have to replace the engine so okay gotta so be careful really yeah. really pays to pop the hood and see what's underneath there. Yeah. So now you're a driver, you have your own vehicle. What about costs? Fuel, insurance? Uh, fuel would be about... Less than a dollar say, a liter. Yeah, half of what we would be paying in Canada. Um, insurance, what I pay for a year of insurance here would be roughly two months of what I was paying in Canada. Car washes everywhere. And if you don't want to wash your car, it's not that expensive at all if you want an interior exterior shampoo and everything like detailed around uh, 10 bucks yeah uh, without inside the inside costs a little bit more yeah about 25 for inside outside but like i'm talking your car is sparkling looks brand new when they're done it's it's pretty amazing uh, so with the deficit of uh, let's say western cars you made a bet on the chinese guys i Have did 
I did, I, I bought a Chinese vehicle because of all the sanctioning that was taking place. I was worried that maybe car parts, parts might be an issue. You know, that's, that's kind of why I moved away from the idea of getting a Mercedes or a European vehicle, or even uh, at one point I was thinking of shipping a, a North American vehicle here. Not but, a good idea, they yeah, tell me, but all... some claim that parts supply from America is okay, but my mechanic is not a fond of it, so not, not yeah. fond of it. So maybe it's a good choice. Guarantee yeah, things, so. still running. So yeah, and, and very happy with it. Nice sunroof and everything. Yeah. Uh, the traffic lights any different in, in here in Belarus? What do you think? They yeah, there's there's some subtle differences. Obviously, red stop, yellow, and then your green. Um, what what's, about extra what's, green arrow? What's different here is the lights will flash to let you know that it's going to change to yeah, red. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of gives you a gauge of oh, okay, time to slow down, which is good. Count, um, count down as well on the traffic yeah, lights. Yeah. Count down on the walking for sure. Um, but there's uh, situations that you'll get into where the light is red, and then there's green arrows telling you okay, red light. But if you're turning left, you can go. So you got to understand that these green arrows are for certain lanes only. Um, the most confusing one to me is sometimes you'll see a red light with a green arrow going straight and it's like, okay, what do I do here? Am I supposed to stop or am I supposed to go? Um, but once you start understanding that the, the lights are sort of set up for individual lanes, it's, it's not that bad. And you just kind of go with the flow of traffic anyway. So if okay. the guy in front of you is going, then you go too. So you're out of town to see your provincial manor house and uh, there's occasional trimming that has to happen so you are rolling more or less frequently yeah. there. Yeah. What about the countryside roads? We here go by impression that American and Canadian roads are all superb, sweet and nice. What's your impression of our road infrastructure? I'm actually really impressed. I mean obviously it depends on the area that you're in. in some areas you're going to have gravel roads, uh, potholes, that sort of thing but I find that uh, they really stay on top of that here. Um, you know, seasonally, they're fixing whatever issues there are. Um, generally, I would say that the roads are great. Uh, I could do with a, a few less speed bumps, but no, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I was very surprised, very surprised. So there is at least two things that foreign drivers here are confronted with. First one is uh, speed fines that somehow are just not getting to the official address. Maybe uh, traffic cops have a different transcription of name or something, but we, fi we, we find out about them when we come up to extend the TRP. And it's a bad idea to have a bunch of uh, fines on your TRP extension day because it's normally like the last, very last day to do that. And uh, they ask you to fix the paperwork. Well, there are ways to make it fast and efficient. Fines on the side, fines are no problem. You can pay them as you drive. Of course, best to pull over and pay them as you have stopped. What's the, case, what's the deal with... Uh, car accidents. What's the deal with car accidents? <laughs> car accidents are very different here. Uh, you do not move your car out of the way. So if you're in the middle lane on the highway and you get into a fender bender and the vehicle is drivable, you do not pull over to the side to allow for the flow of traffic to take place. You leave your vehicle where it is. So oftentimes you'll be on the highway and uh, traffic stops and you just know that it's uh, either the president is going by or there was an accident. Yeah, fair enough. When uh, you, there's been a little collision or something like this, there's normally an insurance paper, they call it Euro Protocol. It covers 800 euro worth of damage. If the parties have agreed that, yeah, this is this guy's fault and what the others say, yeah, it's kind of my fault and you draw a little scheme and then you remove the cars and cheerfully continue. But Belarusians are a little bit 
mm, conscious about the damage restoration and they normally think there's some kind of an undervalued damage somewhere there so they fetch the cops as if they're going to run an expert estimate about how much those scratches would cost yeah sometimes they uh, fix it like this normally they fetch the cops and if it's just too critical if there's some kind of uh, accident or fire starting then you can remove the vehicle ideally capturing all the uh, fragments of the collision so generally this is a lovely country to drive around yeah on top of other things absolutely okay safe travels thank you for the thank chat you. and uh, cheers from Minsk guys see you later